starting a new series of videos dedicated to book reviews. The types of books that I will be reviewing are those that discuss the topics relevant to this channel, such as individualism, liberty, self-reliance, self-defense, and health. The book I will be reviewing today is Dangerous, written by Milo Yiannopoulos. I chose to read this book because I admire Milo for what he's been doing to help promote freedom of speech, particularly on college campuses where, ironically, it is being threatened the most. And yes, I know what you all are thinking, Milo is a very controversial figure, and even if you dislike him, I would highly recommend reading his book. And, spoiler alert, he tells you exactly what would need to happen in order for him to go away and for his work to not be relevant anymore. In other words, if you hate him and want him to go away, he will tell you exactly how in his book. I would first like to share some of my favorite quotes from this book. In an America where victimhood is a currency, it is highly profitable to be oppressed. I believe this is a profound statement and probably the most explanatory single sentence in the entire book. If victimhood is being treated like a currency, it makes perfect sense why we see social justice warriors bending over backwards to maintain these victimhood hierarchies. And we see social justice warriors do this when they are constantly injecting race, sex, and sexual orientation into conversations where these things are not particularly relevant. I would also like to add this is why the welfare state is inherently flawed, because it is more profitable for some people to play the victim, not get a job, and live off of welfare, as opposed to empower themselves, get a job, provide their own income, and be self-sufficient. Instead of encouraging people to change themselves, the left tells vulnerable people that they should instead change the environment around them to protect themselves from having their feelings hurt. It's not your fault, the left soothingly coos, it's society. Here Milo perfectly indicates why this left, what he terms the leftist mentality, is not empowering to the individual. The mentality supports determinism rather than free will. A single individual cannot control society, so this proposes that an individual's empowerment and their destiny is not in their control. And as Milo further explains in his book, this drive to control others instead of trying to control your own reactions and all of this language policing, this drive to control society, is why we see freedom of speech being attacked on college campuses, mostly from those on the left, as he terms the leftists. Leftism, which combines tribal identity politics with a disdain for personal responsibility, is the ultimate political expression of this destructive instinct to blame other people for their problems, instead of undergoing the difficult process of self-reflection. I do believe this is a fairly accurate description of leftists in general. And yes, the lack of the willingness to self-reflect is destructive to not only you, but others around you. What Milo has described in this quote is pure narcissism. And Milo knows it. And this is why he doesn't have a problem trolling these groups of people. Personally, I don't like to offend people. But if I can tell that someone is virtue signaling just to boost their ego, or they're playing the victim just to get their way, <laughs> I have no problem with it either. And for this reason, I consider Milo a virtuous troll. He doesn't target the weak. He targets the narcissists and the virtue signaling leeches in our society. And through his provocative statements, he exposes the underlying agenda of these leftists. The reason lefties in the media saw me as a ringleader of the trolls is that it's hard for them to imagine people moving collectively without a leader. 
It's their authoritarianism showing. For them, a herd must have a shepherd. The idea of people thinking and acting independently frightens them. As Milo states, this herd mentality makes it difficult for a lefty to even fathom an individual acting independently from a group. Not only is this a grossly oversimplified way of assuming one's life experiences, but it also alludes to the individual not being able to function outside of these groups. Well, here's something I've learned during my time in America. Aggressive public displays of virtue are where the morally deplorable hide. This quote is referencing those people that are more interested in virtue signaling than they are about the cause. In other words, they are more interested in letting everyone know that they support the cause rather than providing arguments as to why you should support the cause. And we see this on all sides of the political spectrum. For example, with everything that's been coming out about Hollywood, you know, like Harvey Weinstein and all the actors and producers that were aggressively supporting feminism in the Women's March, they turn out to be the ones that engage in rape and sexual assault or voluntarily choose to remain silent so that they can accept a bribe. And we see this on the right side as well. Try going to a virtue signaling event that claims to support the police, the troops, and the veterans. What you'll hear is a lot of exaggerated glory stories as opposed to what could be done to help those veterans and troops and the police who suffer from PTSD or other mental problems based on what they had to do. Moving on from my favorite quotes, I wanted to talk about the overall purpose I think this book serves. In this book, Milo talks a lot about the culture war and how he believes for generations now, conservatives have lost the culture war. He believes that for generations now, conservatives have given up on having any influence in the areas of art, academia, and pop culture. He believes that in order to save Western societies, conservatives need to win the culture war. Milo doesn't necessarily describe himself as a conservative, but he does describe how he admires and he agrees with a lot of the values and principles that are associated with conservatism. And as you'll see from the titles of some of his chapters, he's not only hated by the progressive left. I'll go ahead and read off the titles of the chapters in his book. Why the progressive left hates me. Why the alt-right hates me. Why Twitter hates me? Why feminists hate me? Why Black Lives Matter hates me? Why the media hates me? Why establishment gays hate me? Notice he emphasizes establishment gays. Why establishment Republicans hate me? Why Muslims hate me? Milo states that throughout his life he has always been anti-establishment. But the establishment the enemy to his personal freedoms became clear when he read Atlas Shrugged for the first time, which also happens to be a huge influence in my life personally. And I quote, And then one day, while attending Manchester, I was told I could not read Atlas Shrugged. I thought, this is poppycock. Fuck anyone who tells me that I... Fuck anyone who tells me what I can and cannot read. I finished it three days later. Everything became clear to me then. My need to rebel against the establishment hadn't changed, but the establishment itself had morphed right before my eyes. If capitalists are to be hated, then I will champion their causes. If being anti-drug is the new anti-culture, I'll never smoke or snort anything ever again. And if everyone else is kissing Amy Schumer's lazy, untalented ass, I'll write an article called Feminism is Cancer. Milo credits the beginning of his provocateur career to Gamergate. So much so that he dedicated an entire chapter called Why Gamers Don't Hate Me. As a journalist, while he was covering the hysteria of Gamergate, he realized 
that these gamers were winning the cultural war. In fact, he, he likes to describe them as cultural libertarians. In the book, Milo states that authoritarians despise being laughed at. Milo is not a provocateur simply because it's fun, but he recognizes that humor itself can be used as a tool against power. And in the book, Milo states openly that he doesn't expect everyone to be like him. He doesn't expect everyone to be a provocateur, to dedicate so much of their time to trolling. <laughs> but the, the advice he gives, and I think this is very pragmatic advice to everyone, is to have fun. And he makes a very valid point. For those people who are on the fence that haven't necessarily taken a political side, who do you, which side do you think they're going to go to? The side that's having fun? The side that allows people to be themselves? Or the side that is constantly policing language and promoting all this anxiety, anger, and rage over the littlest things, over microaggressions? And of course, in good humor, he titles his epilogue, How to Be a Dangerous Faggot even if you're not gay. And in his epilogue, he points out that writing these flawless essays won't necessarily get you the audience that you need to make a difference. And this really hit home for me. I love writing. I haven't done enough public speaking yet. Um, I will spend so much time writing something perfectly only to see that when I post it online, the people that actually read it are most likely the people that already agree with me. And Milo says this is another reason why he's chosen to be a provocateur, because he wants to get that attention, and then once he gets that attention, then he can go ahead and lay on the substance relating to the values and principles that he was hoping to talk about. And you'll see him do this with all of his college talks. He'll say very provocative things up front, especially the titles of his, of his speeches. Um, so he says very provocative things. He gets everyone's attention. He's very flamboyant. And then all of a sudden, he can be very serious. And he'll give a very well-stated argument for certain values and principles. Another interesting thing about what I would like to call the Milo effect is that his name alone can trigger an emotional response with social justice warriors and the political left. And that reaction exposes their underlying agenda, their underlying need to language police and to control others. Just his name alone. <laughs> if you don't believe me, try posting any of these quotes that I've given earlier in the video on social media, whether it be Facebook or Twitter, and see what the responses will be of people that don't like Milo. I'll go ahead and give a recent example from my Facebook. I combined two of my favorite quotes, and as you'll see, this was the very first response from one of my hardcore feminist friends. And these ad hominem attacks go on for hundreds of comments. It is truly surreal sometimes to see people behave this way. It's funny, it can be entertaining, but the disturbing thing is that a lot of these people are in academia and they've been programmed to attack the individual rather than attack the ideas, rather than attack the values and principles. And what I find truly intellectually dishonest is that they find that it is perfectly reasonable to discredit someone based on what groups they are a part of. Whether or not these groups are voluntary or involuntary, 
for example, they may find that it's perfectly reasonable to discredit you if you're white, cisgender, or whatever. Or if you're on the right side of the political spectrum. And by the way, the forward of the book is called So About All That Drama. And Milo details why his first attempt to get his book published was cancelled. He goes into what happened on his end, and I think it is important to read that, that part and see the stark difference between his description of what happened and how mainstream media has portrayed what he said. What I find truly incredible about this incident was that it could have destroyed Milo, but instead, because he is a strong individualist, he overcame it and he created his own publishing company. I want to thank you all for watching, and yes, I would highly recommend this book. It is a very fun read, and trolling aside, all of his claims and arguments are well cited. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe if you thought this review was helpful. I also have a Facebook page and an Instagram if you want to follow me there. Until next time, thank you.